please welcome Dr. Nasruddin. Good morning, everyone. Um, my talk is a little bit different than the. Uh, we will discuss. I will discuss about the uh, pathobiology of uh, some tissue injury uh, for the diseases. Uh, my research is related on the hypertension, the fellow of the American Heart Association. I have been working for the last 25 years on. Um, Eclampsia, right? Pregnancy induced hypertension. Today, I will, uh, my talk is on uh, oxygen free radical and tissue injury. So, we know that uh, uh, tissue injury happens with the reactive oxygen species. The, what is the oxidative stress? Oxidative stress is the imbalance between the uh, oxygen free radical superoxide and the antioxidant in the body. This uh, free oxygen radical is introduced in the body either exogenously or endogenously. Exogenously uh, it from the environment and endogenously uh, it is from the biochemical processes inside the body. Uh, And then I will discuss how the uh, these oxygen free radical, uh, one of the first supplement I extensively studied in my lab to see its scavenger or it can neutralizes the oxidative stress. Uh, this is the financial disclosure. I'm the founder and CEO for two organizations, and also I'm the chief medical advisor for Advanced Pharmaceutical. Okay, so I would like to show this slide first to give a little bit of the biochemistry to, you know, we all know the biochemistry for, uh, you know, the medical uh, college. I also studied Guyton's book. So this, uh, this slide uh, we can refer from some of the, uh, some of the talks from Dr. Tilwar about the endothelial dysfunctions and pathobiology, pathogenesis of the diseases. If you see here, here the red box is the oxygen uh, free radical or we can see the superoxide. It can be uh, produced uh, by the biochemical process in the body by the reductions of the oxygen. And then you see the, the SOD, uh, SOD is superoxide dismutase, can convert uh, these uh, oxidative uh, free radical to hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide with a cascade of the enzymatic reactions can uh, form the water, right? So, uh, at the same time, this superoxide can cause some other uh, pathobiology or produces some other uh, reactive oxygen species. So, one of them, uh, you see that they can put a hydroxy peroxide radical here, hydroxy peroxide radical. And then, uh, as Dr. Thilwar mentioned here, that uh, you know that the nitric oxide signaling is uh, important, uh, but whenever the hydrogen uh, peroxide, uh, you know that the uh, super this uh, superoxide, when it combined with the nitric oxide, and form the peroxy nitrate. So here you see that it uh, decreases the availability of availability of nitric oxide. So nitric oxide signaling then causes the uh, endothelial dysfunctions, that is the tissue injury. So uh, I would like to go further, and then uh, what I will discuss, I will talk. So one of the uh, food supplement I extensively studied in my lab. Uh, to see how it uh, neutralizes the uh, superoxide. I'll 
go over it here. Uh, as I said that the uh, oxidative uh, superoxide, or I can, I can tell the superoxide, that would be good, one term, superoxide or oxygen-free radical can cause the microvascular uh, dysfunctions. As, as we know that uh, our brain, blood brain barrier, so I extensively studied in my lab to make the, uh, you know, uh, so in B2, uh, in B2 BBB, like the monolayer of endothelial, endo, endothelial cells, and we use the uh, in human brain microvascular endothelial cells. And then we found that hypoxic condition can disrupt the, uh, you know, uh, microvascular, uh, uh, you know, uh, microvascular, or uh, we can tell the uh, monolayer permeability. So in the it, it is case for the aging. Aging can causes the disruption of different, uh, uh, you know, the protein. Uh, 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 different uh, tangential protein. We know the different tangential protein is uh, disrupted. So, <coughs> what I will do if body have not sufficient antioxidant, what we need to do? We need to supplement it from uh, outside of the body because, as I said, the imbalance between the uh, reactive oxygen species and antioxidant in the body can cause all these dysfunctions. So, whenever body cannot provide the sufficient antioxidant activity, then we need to supplement it. Again. So, today I will discuss with how a, a, you know the full supplement can neutralize the oxidative stress. So this is the uh, RBB5 uh, gel, which is uh, composed of uh, different fruit blend, and then only the speciality of this one has the uh, uh, fiber, uh, fiber zone two, and then the metal uh, SOD, metal source of SOD. So these unique combinations make this product to very efficient. Uh, to work as the antioxidant agents and restore the SOD and plus the uh, plus fever zone, so it's a different uh, health benefit. So I use the jacket cell line, which is the T cell, uh, jacket cell, and I uh, in my lab we uh, induce these jacket cells with different concentrations of different components of. Uh, different components of the RBB5 gel and RBB5 gel itself. And then we measured the oxidative biomarkers, anti-inflammatory biomarkers, and then uh, we also measured the T cells uh, differentiation, CD4 and CD8 cells. So as, I see, as, I, as we see here, the lipopolysaccharide, LPS we use for inductions to make the oxidative, st uh, uh, oxidative stress and then we use the different concentrations uh, of the, you know, the uh, uh, patented compound that is what is the RBB5 gel. We found that the RBB5 gel uh, attenuated, 100% attenuated the uh, LPS induced uh, a stress marker 8 isoprostan. And then the same way we did for COX-2. Uh, COX-2 also been attenuated by the, uh, so I'll go a little fast in this one. Uh, we need to have more other uh, data also. So attenuations and then we, we, uh, we analyze the inflammatory markers. Uh, that is the I IFN alpha and then uh, IL-6 and then TGA-beta and then TNF-alpha so as is what it does so all these of, and, uh, oxidative biomarkers uh, and uh, anti-inflammatory biomarkers that are induced by LPS are attenuated by the RBB5 jump and then this is very interesting data which we uh, we just uh, 
induce the, uh, you know, the jerky cells with the rebibify gel and we found that CD8 and CD4 is uh, highly uh, differentiated, uh, significantly differentiated in rebibify gel induced uh, 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 jerky cells. So what is the implications of this CD8 and uh, CD4? As we know that the CD8 uh, is, uh, you know, is migrate to the, when the infections is migrate to the, uh, inf you know, the inflammatory site and kill the microorganism and dead tissues and CD4 activate the, you know, B cells for produce the antibody. So whenever the CD4 and CD8 ratio is 2 is to 1, uh, that, is, that is the usual healthy immune system. When this uh, ratio goes down, this is the impairment of the uh, immune system. And then whenever it increases, it, uh, it increases the uh, immune response. But in our study, we found that it's not a 2.1, it is around ratio is to, uh, uh, CD4, CD8 ratio is uh, 10 is to 1. It means that uh, it is high, but it is in the very closed system. It is a closed system, an in vitro system. It may not work exactly the same way in our uh, body system. However, this is the closed system we found there, highly activated CD4 over CD8 ratios. As I said before, that we use the brain uh, microvascular endothelial cells, make the monolayer, and then we use the hypoxic conditions uh, to see that what does it happen. So uh, we have the data, which is we found that type, type junction is put in, but due to the patent uh, information, we are not disclosing. But I am disclosing here for two of the uh, Paroxy lipid peroxidation paroxyde, biomarker and two uh, protein biomarkers that we study. So whenever we uh, treated the, you know, the, not the treatment, I'm sorry here, so but the hypoxic conditions induces, you see here, the uh, biomarkers, the, uh, the uh, you know, that it means that the lipid. Uh, Degradations and protein degradations happen, and which is attenuated by uh, by the rebibify gel. So another biomarker is HNE. Uh, there is the repeat peroxidation uh, biomarker, and we uh, we just we also studied the uh, uh, protein uh, degradation biomarker. Uh, well, I don't like to go in details on that, but what we can say is that the hypoxia induced protein degradation and lipid peroxidation biomarkers are uh, significantly 100% activated by rebibify gel. So now uh, we are talking about the how uh, gut uh, talks for brain. As we mentioned that uh, the revivified gel, in addition to working as an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory product, it can modulate the gut microbe. We know the gut microbes is very important for, uh, nowadays you know all of you that is the gut works for the brain. The diversity and modulation, some of the probiotics in the market which can modulate the, uh, modulate the gut microbes they can do the very good immune response, you know, the uh, neural, uh, you know, neural response. So if you see here, uh, the, whatever the gut microbes, uh, diversity and good gut, uh, gut microbes are in, inside our body can, uh, can, okay, so, uh, uh, and gut microbes is modulated and which gut microbes produce the short chain fatty acid. And these short chain fatty acids, like the acetate and butyrate, they induce a cascade of the reactions 
and then it induces for the production of um, the neurotransmitters, obviously good for the brain, and then this biaxial uh, curve, whenever at the same way the brain have good brain, good neuro uh, neurotransmitters, then can modulate. This is the biaxial uh, relations between gut, uh, gut and the brain. Gut talks for brain. So our study, we also did some of the study, and then in my lab, uh, we just form a uh, in vitro uh, gut micro uh, cultivation system. What we did, we just uh, get the fecal, fecal uh, materials and then we culture it in petri dish and then we covered it with silicon mat. The silicon mat is comparable with our uh, our gut. So gut and then what we did, we applied the components of VBB5 gel and the VBB5 itself and we measured the uh, measured different, you know, the, uh, the gut microbiota uh, microbiota and then we also measured the uh, byproduct like the short chain fatty acids and other metabolites. Uh, this data shows that if you see here uh, the gut micro, though this revivified product can cross the uh, you know uh, the uh, silicon mat is which is comparable with the uh, uh, with, with the gut uh, uh, you know the gut systems. And so whenever we use the SOD plus fever salt can increase the so uh, this is the growth, I'm sorry, this is the microbial growth, the OD is the microbial growth, growth. So whenever we have the non-treated and treated growth, we found that uh, the microbial uh, population increases when we uh, incubate, when just we incubate it with the uh, uh, revivified product. So uh, this is very interesting data, as you see here, uh, I, you know, very, I just took one of the lactobacillus. Lactobacillus uh, nowadays in the probiotics are used for, uh, the, you know, uh, for modulations of the lactobacillus. You see that, uh, that for the basal there is a uh, distribution of the, uh, um, you know, uh, microbiota that is shifted to the other, uh, you know, lactobacillus is high. In the same way, we see that the lactobacillus is shifted from the uh, beef bacterium. What is I, uh, what I'm explaining here to you that it works in the anti-oxidative effect. At the same way, it modulates the gut microbes. And my, this is my uh, final uh, final uh, uh, final data showing that. As I said that short chain fatty acid is very important for uh, the, for, you know, uh, for inductions of the gut, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters by the sympathetic nervous system is induced in the microbiota. So for healthy uh, microbes, a healthy microbiota, uh, the BBB5 uh, uh, gel, uh, is a very significant product. And then uh, our data shows that the obviously uh, uh, the SOD is absorbed very good. We know that the SOD uh, is uh, uh, metabolized in the stomach, but uh, it is uh, the formulations is good, then it goes to the intestine and it is uh, entered into the uh, circulatory systems. And then, uh, uh, in addition to the anti-inflammatory and anti-oxidative, is a uh, obviously we can say that yes, a T cell, a T cell, the T cell activations, it is affecting uh, the COVID-19 infections. Uh, I know that there is some undocumented data showing that this revivified product is uh, uh, effective against the COVID infections. So that was described by our, uh, you know, the T-cell differentiation study. So obviously, 
for gut microbes study, we can say it can be used as a, uh, you know, uh, uh, for good neuro response. Okay, uh, that's all I think. So this cover everything. If, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that slide. So, is So, combination, right? And this is, uh, I did some other studies, whenever SOD is with fever cell, can uh, causes more, uh, more, this is the capsulations of the uh, fever cell, can capsulate the so, SOD. So you are saying that SOD doesn't get absorbed from the stomach, it gets destroyed. So the fever cell can help. Yes, encapsulated that one okay. and help you. Thank you. Thank you for your this extensive lecture. Thank you, everybody.